course, I listened very carefully to what the Prime Minister had to say because he had said nothing before bringing this bill to the House in the present circumstances. Nothing can excuse the fact that this bill, very important bill, was circulated Saturday, brought to the House today for first, second, third reason. And I'm not surprised that the Prime Minister didn't even try to justify in parliamentary behavior. In fact, when he refrained from making any reference to that issue, it was a sign of mépris. I take it to be a sign of mépris towards the present parliament. At least I hope when he sums up, he'll tell us why was there the need to circulate the bill Saturday and to bring it for first, second, third reading on Tuesday. There was, there is, there was and there is absolutely no justification for that. And I take it that he has refrained from making any reference to that issue because there is absolutely no justification for that kind of parliamentary behavior. I also listened very carefully to try and understand the real reasons behind this bill. A lot of blah, 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 all over the place. And I wanted to try and understand what were and are the real reasons behind this bill. When I listened very carefully to the Prime Minister, all I heard, but en passant, I must say, Honorable Ratna went a bit at length on that, rightly so. But the Prime Minister was very short on that, the aspect of fake marriages, mariage blanc, shame marriages, call it what we want. It is a real issue. It has been for quite a while. And it will always remind, remain a, a real issue. But I'm a bit surprised because this was the only reason put forward by the Prime Minister. And en passant, no figures provided. We know how many foreign workers there are, both male and female, in the country. But no figures provided. Has there been an acceleration of things that, that justifies this kind of parliamentary behavior? Say, en passant, that the Prime Minister gave as only reason for this piece of legislation the issue no, I will correct myself. Listen, listening very carefully, there were two reasons from what I gathered. One was this issue of mariage blanc, of fake mariages, which is a real issue. But the law already provides for, for, for combating this. And it is already, it has been, and it is already correctly being faced by the required authorities. I agree that there was a second reason which the linked, which the Prime Minister brought forward. It is to protect the Mauritians who are victims of mariage blanc. Now, come on. Mauritians are adult enough to take care of themselves. We don't need that kind of amendment when the law already provides what is required to combat mariage blanc, fake, sham marriages, and to protect Mauritians, male and female, from becoming victims of foreigners in such circumstances. So I must say, I feel a bit sad that I haven't heard any attempt from the Prime Minister to justify coming forward with this piece of legislation. 
I feel a bit sad because it is an important issue. It is an important moment. Therefore, I believe that the way the Prime Minister presented this piece of legislation, in a way, he pled coupable. But he still has time to tell us what are the real reasons. If there are figures that, that tell us that this issue has become urgent, tell us. This issue of mariage blanc, of uh, fake mariages, sham mariages. Give us figures, tell us more about it. But I don't think that kind of legislation that we are asked to approve tonight is justified in anyway. What I believe was justified was to take, it's a bit like the, the debate we had the other day on mental care. There are occasions ratées. Too many occasions ratées. And here again we had an opportunity to look at definitions, to look at provisions in, in the bill. And I'm not satisfied at all with an archaic definition of prohibited immigrant. The definition is contained in a whole section of the Immigration uh, Act. And I don't think anybody can be happy with that lengthy definition of prohibited uh, immigrants. Others before me have said so. It includes alcoholics, drug Addicts, not traffickers, of course, but drug uh, addicts. No, it, 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 it addicted to any drug. Right, sir? Yes, of course, what I mean is that, uh, of course, a, a, a drug trafficker must be a pro prohibited, but not a drug addict. Not necessarily a drug addict. A drug addict to me is somebody who needs treatment, needs care. But you need, the solution is not to make automatically a prohibited immigrant of people who are, according to me, victims more than anything else. Therefore, I'm giving, I'm giving just these examples. There's one even more, more unacceptable, and I'll come, to back, I'll come back to that later. A prohibited immigrant includes persons who are likely to become a charge on public funds. So any foreigner who falls ill, who needs treatment, of course he'll become a, a charge to, to, to public funds. And I don't think that that is justification enough to make of somebody a prohibited immigrant simply because on a given occasion he becomes a charge on public funds. So this is, I believe, a missed opportunity of providing, of, of revising the definition of prohibited immigrant. As we know, all of us, the bill has three parts. The first part, whereas at present the law says the law says that a foreigner who marry, marries a Mauritian automatically has the status of resident in Mauritius because he or she is the spouse, becomes uh, the spouse of a citizen. And now we are adding and was not a prohibited immigrant at the time of becoming such a spouse. I don't. I honestly don't think that is required. Apparently, there has been one case, my friend, Honorable Reza Yutim, there has been one judgment in the Supreme Court, there has been one case which is quite shocking. A foreigner who married a Mauritian, and, and it's quite shocking that case. But one case doesn't justify amending that uh, section of the law in that way. And I'm very uneasy about the, the definition. So if he is, unless 
He is a house of a citizen and was not a prohibited immigrant at the time of becoming such a spouse. Does it have effet retroactive? Must it, must it be that at the time of the marriage, he had been found to be an... Uh, I, I lose this, uh, a, a prohibited immigrant. Or can we work backwards? Well, was, was that person, he or she, in a position of being found to be, but was not found to be? But avec effet retroactif, we can go back. This makes me very, very uh, uneasy. And also, somebody can have been an alcoholic at a given point in time, and then he he did the necessary to come out of that state of affairs. So, are we going to punish people who might have been an alcoholic or a drug addict at a given point uh, in time? So, I, I, I'm very, very unhappy, Madam Speaker, with, with adding, without reason being given, adding those words, that we are adding to the... I, I honestly think we should think above all about families and children. I don't want to go into details. Maybe Honorable Reza Yutim will do that. To us, later, to us, la priorité, c'est la famille. Les, ce sont les familles concernées et les enfants concernés. This should be our... Priority. The MMM is proud that, as in many cases in the past, we fought for spouses to have their rights recognized in Mauritius. There was a time, it, it's, uh, the MMM is proud of that, of that, amongst many other fights that we fought. Honorable Omiridi Chifra, Shirin Omiridi Chifra, and many others. This is part of our, of our fight. And we know how people suffered the fundamental injustice. But I believe this amendment that we are bringing brings with it the risk d'abus. En passant, it's a coincidence that we are debating this, this bill. Just a few days after in the Guardian, the Guardian Observer of last Sunday, there was a, a dossier published in the Guardian Observer of last Sunday. Couples face insulting checks in sham marriage crackdown. Makes very disturbing reading. How in the UK the authorities are abusing, are using insulting checks to find supposedly marriage, uh, sham marriage, and carry out a crack, a crackdown. We must be very careful. And I believe adding these few words allows for that kind of uh, abuse, Madam Speaker. So, so, I find it very sad that we are amending, that's the first point out of three main points, that we are amending the law to add those words instead of leaving the law as it is, somebody who becomes a spouse of a Mauritian citizen automatically should get, as it is now, the right to become a resident of Mauritius. The second point, of course we agree with, it should have been done a long time ago, that is amending the definition of prohibited immigration, immigrant to do away with any reference to infirmity, handicap, and so on. Fair enough. This is a very good thing. It should have been 
Well, it was pointed out, pointed out years ago that this should be amended. It's not acceptable. It's, a, it's not in line with, with international conventions that we have approved for, for years now. Fair enough. But we should realize also that the two paragraphs that we are amending read as such, persons who appear to the immigration officer to be suffering from any physical or mental infirmity and who are likely to be a charge on public funds. That was the last commanding part. And in the same way, persons who are dumb, blind, or otherwise physically defective or physically handicapped, and again, and who are likely to be a charge on public funds. We do away with these with two paragraphs, rightly so. Good, very good. But we should not forget that lower down paragraph, subparagraph J, remains. That is, prohibited immigrants, prohibited immigrants include persons who are likely to become a charge on public funds. That is the exact same words that were the commanding last part in the two paragraphs that we are deleting. So I think we should look afresh at that, uh, so that, uh, uh, because handicapped people are a charge on public funds, of course. But uh, as uh, prohibited people, people with health problems and so on, are a charge on public funds and therefore automatically are included in the definition of prohibited immigrants. This, I believe, also should have been deleted. Not just the two paragraphs re referring to infirmity and handicap uh, conditions, but also that paragraph G, placing all persons who are likely to become a charge on public funds, placing them in the category of prohibited uh, uh, immigrants. The last uh, point is contentious in its wording, but also in its wide intention. I have been prime minister. We are not going to be irresponsible as far as we are concerned, and preclude any prime minister, the present and future prime minister, from exerc exercising authority, carrying out duties that are the responsibility, the duties of a prime minister. But under our existing law, the prime minister has already a lot of powers as far as immigration is uh, concerned. The two sections that we are introducing, I believe, are very badly drafted. Very, very badly drafted. The new section M, therefore now prohibited, uh, will include Persons who from information or advice which in the opinion of the minister is reliable information or advice are likely to be undesirable inhabitants. Wide open. The undesirable inhabitants. I find that much too wide and not necessary as the law stands. And the next one also. It, therefore, prohibited will include persons or class of persons whose presence in Mauritius, from information or advice, which in the opinion of the, of the minister is reliable information or advice, is likely to be prejudicial to the interests of defense, public safety, public order, public morality, or even public health. As I said, the Prime Minister of Mauritius under the Constitution and the different laws has wide powers, in, in this case, as far as immigration is concerned. And I think that these two paragraphs are 
badly drafted and go too far in giving absolute discretion without any guideline in the legislation to the uh, Prime Minister en poste to exercise this very serious uh, issue of placing people in the prohibited prohibited immigrants category, Mr. Speaker. Therefore, as far as the MMM is concerned, we are against this piece of legislation. The procedure followed, the rush, the fact that we have not been told what are the real reasons behind this piece of uh, legislation, and as I said, we believe that the law as it exists gives to the Prime Minister and to the authorities concerned the required powers to deal with mariage blanc, with fake sham uh, mariages, as well as the issue, other uh, issues that uh, have been brought up. I, I repeat, I think we should be very careful when we deal with families, with wives, with husbands, with children uh, especially, and this piece of legislation, even if there is only one case of inhuman treatment of a family and of, and of children and of spouses, is one uh, too many. This is why, especially we ask, uh, the, it would have been so, so the bonne foi for the Prime Minister, well, <laughs> well, I correct that because I expected the Prime Minister to tell us, to give us the real reasons behind this piece of legislation, which he didn't do. So what I had hoped for was for the Prime Minister to make his second reading speech, to tell us the real reasons behind this piece of legislation, to try and justify that piece of legislation, which he has, that piece of legislation, which he has not done, and then we would have carried on with the debate on another day. Instead of that, we have had a debate where, in his opening speech, the Prime Minister didn't tell us why the rush, didn't give us the real reasons for that piece of legislation, and that is why, as far as the MMM is concerned, we are in total disagreement with that bill. Thank you, Madam Speaker.